I came late to skiing. Came late to the dance, so to speak. That's the way I look at it. I myself didn't become aware of skiing until my mid-twenties. I moved up to the Sierras in 1976, and me and my buddies started doing cross-country skiing. Like a typical day for us, we'd drive up, you know, say to Dodge Ridge, and we'd ski uphill on Crabtree Road, and we didn't know how to make a turn. On the way down, we would crash. Of course, we'd crash so many times, we'd lose track. How <laughs> many wrecks, you know, but if you made it back to the car with only 10 crashes, you were doing good. For whatever reason, I decided I was gonna be a ski bum and I actually moved to Bear Valley because they had this thing where you could work on their trail crew doing brush removal or whatever kind of work they needed done for a couple weeks and they'd give you a season pass. And while I was doing that, three of the ski patrolmen kind of took me under their wing. It was Bill Deal and Claude Fiddler and Chris Aguirre were actually teaching me how to ski and just fell in love with it. You know, I still like skiing even more than I like whitewater rafting, which I love. But skiing isn't just like an addiction for me. It never stops being fun. And here I am 38 years later, probably liking it more than I even did then. Now, I ski at Dodge Ridge because my son is a professional ski patrolman there. He's been there, be going on 14 seasons this year. So I always buy a season pass there because that's when I can spend time with my son and do what I want to do, which is ski. Even go run codes with him sometimes. You know, it feels like the old days when I was patrolling. Which is interesting because I watch him, you know, working with guests and realize that he's a better ski patroller than I ever was. Even though I love ski patrolling, I was there to ski. And he's actually there to serve. I'm proud of him. He's a better patrolman than I was. I came into the maze and he was off to the side. I said, hey Carl, come up with me. So we rode up together. Try to recruit you? No. I told him my goal though. He must have figured it was pointless. I said, Carl, I want to be a certified ski bum. And to do that, you have to ski a million vertical feet. I probably, he probably, yeah, when he heard that, he said, oh, fuck it. Dave ain't gonna go to work. <laughs> no way. In my mind, I'm not a certified ski bum unless I can put in a million vertical feet in one season. I made it like a job. I would, my goal was to get in 70, minimum of 75,000 vertical feet per week. And, you know, getting on long in age and that's, I would just exhaust myself. And I'd come home and do a couch day and get up and go skiing again. So I would ski, recover, ski, recover. My wife was a ski bum widow this winter. I mean, I was either skiing or recovering. Skiing or recovering. <laughs> The only way to get in shape for skiing is to ski. I would tell guys riding with me, look, we can talk on the chair, but we can't talk on the slope because as soon as we unload, as soon as we go through that bull wheel, I'm heading to get back on the chair. shape and then you know some weeks I could get in three four days in a row of skiing I think at the peak I was I could knock out five days of skiing in a week but I needed two days of couch you know sprinkled in there and I was being careful I was eating really well but you know getting old is it's not for the week I tell you <laughs> Oh. <sighs>
damn it. The fuck did I do wrong there? I'll try that shit again. And I was taking it off. I was taking it off. And then, uh, you know, we saw this COVID-19 showing up. And realized that, you know, time was limited. And luckily, in fact, I broke a million the day before the last resort in this year's closed. And I built myself, I had this patch made. Certified ski bum. It's a highlight in my life, reaching that million goal in a real personal kind of way, you know, it's goal accomplished. It's something that I did for myself. I remember when I first started doing a lot of whitewater rafting. I would do what I would call whiting out. I would get into whitewater that was so violent and so confusing that my brain would lose track and I would literally get lost in the whitewater and I would blow the line. I would, and I don't know how many boats I flipped. And I remember I had set a goal of getting to the point where I could slow it down in my head and not get white out. And I can still do that now. It's like it's easier now at this advanced age to do really hard white water. When I reached that goal, it's kind of like this goal of reaching that million vertical feet. Like, wow, I didn't think I was going to get here, but I got here. I remember that moment of no longer whiting out. I remember that moment of hitting that million vertical feet. And I was with my son. It just felt good. It's something I did with my son. I'll feel good about it forever. Well, like Chris Aguirre always says, there is no bad snow, just bad technique. Famous Bill Deal. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. <laughs>